Hey guys, um, <clears throat> I figured I'd make a video on how to set up your uh, crank trigger, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna make two of them here. Uh, one with the MSD flying magnet and the um, Holly uh, crank trigger sensor. Um, this is the drop-in sensor from Holly to replace your uh, your old MSD sensor. Um, the part number for the drop-in sensor is right here, 554118. Um, it is a drop-in for this guy right here that comes with the MSD crank trigger. Uh, don't use these, they're, they're junk. Um, anyway, <clears throat> so this is a small block forward. Uh, this seems to be the most difficult thing to, uh, to set up. Same thing with the small block Chevrolet. And the LS stuff all is internal. Um, once you start getting into high horsepower stuff, you'll wind up probably putting an external uh, crank trigger on it just for a little bit more uh, adjustment. Cam sync, um, just for some more accuracy. But anyway, this is a small block Ford. Um, my engine's a little weird, so uh, this isn't really your typical setup. The timing pointer I had to make um, and I also had to uh, machine into the, uh, the the bracket for the crank trigger, but um, you'll you know your results may vary. You're gonna have to you know they come with a good uh, you know bracket that holds a sensor and it's adjustable. Um, but anyway, really the hardest part is finding where it's supposed to be put on and uh, setting the gap and setting up in the software. So the reason this is a black Holly EFI piece is because that's the part that comes with the uh, the 36-1 um, Holly crank trigger kit. Uh, this is what comes with the MSD kit, but like I said, I already had the machine mine. Um, so I'm using this one for this video, but this is what would normally come with a kit. Um, I'm gonna make a video on the 36-1 also, but a lot of guys use this uh, this existing, you know, four magnet deal from when they had a carburetor or something like that. Uh, so this is just how you set it up. So anyway, done on the compression stroke. If you don't know how to find the compression stroke, that's a different video. Um, but just know that all this is done on the compression stroke. Uh, if you have a belt drive, it's pretty easy because <clears throat> this will be at the top. Um, remember, your cam spins at half the speed of the crank. So top dead center on the compression stroke is 180 degrees away from top dead center, 180 degrees on the camshaft from top dead center on the uh, exhaust stroke. So all this is done on the compression stroke. <clears throat> First thing you want to do is center. So... Um, my engine's out of the car, uh, cylinder heads off of it, but you want to find top dead center on number one cylinder on a small block forward. It's the one on the passenger side front, um, small block Chevrolet, the other side. <clears throat> Same thing with big block Chevrolet. Uh, anyway, so find top dead center on number one cylinder. Um, I did mine with a dial indicator. You, if you've got the engine together, just use a piston stop. Um, again, that's another video of finding top dead center and on the compression stroke. There's plenty of those floating around on the internet. Um, so if you don't know how to do it, you can uh, <coughs> just search Google or YouTube and you'll find it. Um, anyway, so once you've located top dead center and you've got your wheel, you know, sitting in your hand, there's a whole bunch of different ways to bolt it on. There's a whole bunch of different bolt holes. So what I suggest doing is we need to find our ignition reference angle on the crank. So spin your balancer over to, uh, you know, somewhere between 50 and 60 degrees before top dead center. So we'll use 50. Um, so here we are, we're at 50 degrees and this is 50 degrees before top dead center on the compression stroke. If you notice, right here, we've got a magnet pointing 
right at that sensor. I did this before I started the video. Well, anyway, this is the difference between uh, falling and leading edge on the uh, setup in the Holly software, which I'll go over here in a second. But <clears throat> um, falling and leading edge. So the falling edge is where you want to put it. Um, if you notice, when you spin this, you look at that, that little point right there on the, uh, on the wheel, you see how it pointed straight to the center uh, of that sensor. The falling edge, as you rotate it, goes away from the center of the sensor. Um, the leading edge, if you were to set it on leading edge, <clears throat> you kind of want to get before the center of the sensor. Um, I always do them on the falling edge. Uh, it works a little bit better. But anyway, set it to 50. Now we're a little bit past center. Um, this is uh, this isn't this is critical to do, and you'll also have to con do a static timing check to confirm that you've got this right. So uh, you want your timing light to show you what the ECU thinks you have for timing. So that's where this is important. You don't want to put together a timing map thinking that 30 degrees is 30 degrees when in all reality it could be 34 degrees or 36 degrees. Um, that could create quite a bit of problems. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, once you have this set to, uh, you know, say 50 degrees um, before top dead center on the compression stroke, and you've got your sensor stabbed in where it belongs, um, this bracket slides, so you just kind of <clears throat> pick a spot where it slides to and get it lined up, tighten up your bolts right here. And uh, now you need to work on the sensor gap. So Holly recommends between 40 and 80 thousandths. So normally this would be nice and tight. I'm not gonna tighten this up just because it's uh, about to come off so I can make another video on the 36.1. But um, you, uh, you know, you get this lined up where you want, right? So we're on the, the, the falling edge. And this is a 40 thousandths feeler gauge. Um, they say to set it between 40 and 80 thousandths. I've noticed with high horsepower stuff, especially a small block Ford, um, the crank likes to try to come out of this thing. So the crank tries to come forward. Um, the, the thrust in the engine, it tries to push the crank forward. Um, I always... I always set them on the closer side, um, so I'll set this thing to 40 thousandths. Here's my feeler gauge, and once once you put your feeler gauge in here, you know, it's just like lashing valves. Decide how tight you want it. I mean, you could pin it down on it, which I don't suggest doing, but make sure that it'll slide in and out. Take your lock nut, <clears throat> or your jam nut, right there, and tighten up your jam nut, and then you can hold the two flats on the sensor so that, uh, you don't have, um, <clears throat> so that you don't have to, you know, it doesn't spin in and out when you're tightening up your lock nut. Um, something I recommend doing just because, you know, all this stuff is machined, there's always human error and everything. Um, <clears throat> check your sensor gap every 90 degrees. So just because you've got 40 thousands here, doesn't mean when you spin this engine over 90 degrees, all right, <clears throat> we're gonna be good, but, if you say, say you spin this engine over 90 degrees, um, you might have 60 or 80. You don't know what the runout is on the engine. You don't know, you know, what the runout is on this wheel. It could be off a little bit. Um, so always check it. The, the other thing is, is that these wheels, um, they center off of the hub. So this is an ATI balancer. This is a custom made race balancer. It's like seven and a half inches. That's why this wheel is actually smaller than the balancer your application probably won't have that but you know that that's yeah i just have it set up here for you know to show you guys kind of how to set it up but it has to center off of the the hub it doesn't center off of the bolts you'd be surprised how far it runs out when it doesn't center off of the hub um so make sure it centers off the hub make sure you check your sensor gap every 90 degrees um if you've got somebody to help you you know just kind of hold the hold 5,000 smaller of a feeler gauge in there and spin the engine over and see if it gets anywhere where it gets tight or where it gets loose. Um, 
just because you've got 40 thousandths in one location, you could have 120 thousandths in another location. Will it run? It might, but when you pull a system log, it's usually pretty ugly. So you could have problems at you know higher RPM. Um, the higher the RPM goes, the more critical this stuff gets. So that's how you set up a typical four magnet uh, crank trigger from MSD. Um, <clears throat> hopefully this explains a little bit. Uh, that's the actual physical setup of it. You, the Holly software. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna go. I don't. I like using screen capture software, but. I'm not exactly very good at video editing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to do it uh, here on the laptop. And it's gonna be, you know, kind of archaic, but it's gonna work. Um, this is, uh, I don't know exactly what file this is, but either way, um, when you wanna set up, go into your ignition parameters, okay? Under ignition parameters. Um, ignition type custom and hit configure. So we're going to change this <clears throat> to uh, to one pulse per fire. Okay, digital falling. Remember how we had it? Uh, how we set it up to um, to be on the trailing edge of the sensor. <clears throat> and um, we're going to do. Uh, I, I usually set inductive delay at zero, and then check it with a timing light at say a thousand rpm or idle and then um again at <clears throat> you know three thousand rpm um this right here is your ignition reference angle so remember i said we set this one to 50 so change this to 50 degrees um ignition reference angle that's how you set up your crank sensor and your crank trigger um i'm going to do a video shortly on setting up the cam um, but that will be, that'll be a different video. I'll show you how that works also. Um, but again, small block forward, four magnet, uh, setup of the crank trigger from MSD using the Holly, uh, crank sensor, um, you know, drop in sensor replacement. Uh, hopefully that made sense for you guys. Hopefully I cleared some stuff up. Um, all right. See you.